I think the misconception is, well, I can't ask. I can't ask for what I need or um, I'm scared to, you know, mm-hmm. maybe. Um, or I tried that with that person and that didn't work out. So that's mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Try another person. You know, so. um, if you go to the drugstore because you have a headache and, you know, that brand of um, pain med didn't work, are you just going to let the headache keep happening? <laughs> no, you're going to you're going to go back and you're going to try something else. And so I think that, you know, if if you we can break through that, mm-hmm. um, that it's important to keep keep at it and recognizing that it's hard. Um, and this goes back to the piece of the challenge of not enough therapists right now that, you know, um, but giving yourself that opportunity mm-hmm. and that chance Absolutely. to get the care that you need so that yeah. you get um, the, the healing that you need. I think that uh, if it's okay, if I just want to bring up one misconception, I, this is their interview, but I, I just can't resist mentioning this is oftentimes I'll have clients who'll come to me and say, you know, I, I feel anxious. I, I wasn't beaten as a child. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I had good parents. Yes. Mm-hmm. There's nothing. I haven't had any trauma, you know, what's wrong i shouldn't be feeling this way yes. and so there's enormous guilt mm-hmm. about because you know they haven't lost a limb or something why why do i need to seek out therapy services mm-hmm. and so there's this big misconception again and it kind of goes back with mm-hmm. these you said crisis but there's also this thing where people think that they should have had this troubled childhood yes. that there should be all this struggle mm-hmm. in their lives or these challenges that they had to overcome in order to seek out a therapist. Mm-hmm. And so it's it's really interesting. Sometimes we just have to deal with the guilt mm-hmm. about needing and wanting help and they're feeling guilty about mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's it's really it's really, really interesting. Um yeah. here's our last question. And so you guys can this we you guys can cage fight for this one. <laughs> Let's do this one first. Why do you think that having a therapist has become a part of the national conversation? And and I know the obvious glaring thing is the pandemic, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but it was really even happening before mm-hmm. that. Yeah. So I, you know, I, let's talk about the pandemic, but I also want to look at it also in a larger context. Mm-hmm. Who'd like to go first? Well, I can say that just doing you know speaking you like this outdoor voice. <laughs> speaking, speaking like you know as we are right now talking about it social media um you know children and teens are being are, are watching social media and uh and it's they're normalizing mental health they're normalizing mm-hmm. need and so it's starting it started way before the pandemic so you know just normalizing all of this and it has truly truly been helpful mm-hmm yeah, I agree. I agree. I love that, that they've been normalizing mm-hmm. mental health. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we even saw that um, with uh, Simone Biles mm-hmm. and yes. she got a lot of hate, but she also had tremendous um, support, support. Mm-hmm. A- a- as well. And, you know, you c- I could see it on both sides mm-hmm. where some people, social media is this great thing where it does normalize mental mm-hmm. health and especially in a very large forum like mm-hmm. the Olympics, it also laid her open to, Absolutely. she's probably talking yeah. with her therapist about right <laughs> some of the, yeah. the hate that she yeah. mm-hmm. she received as well. So it is, it is everybody's talking about it. Everybody's so, talking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I would agree about the, the trajectory of social media and I guess we've had it 20 years now maybe has it been 20 years 20 with the years? facebook <laughs> i don't know how old are you facebook <laughs> was it myspace <laughs> myspace, <laughs> MySpace. Uh, yeah. yeah aol <laughs> yeah when you wait the dialogue <laughs> um so but i think too the, the world of mental health has shifted i think we've had this wave of um therapists like us, professionals like us, um, women, um, and, um, women, uh, and, and men from different walks of life Mm -hmm. and different life experiences. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that that has also pushed Mm -hmm. the conversation because as 
we bring our whole stories into the, the, the space of the profession, then it opens up the world in a way to where, oh, well, you know, that's kind of a person that has a similar experience mm-hmm. as mine yes. and they have a similar walk as mine and they're there to listen to me and relate to me in a way that, um, you know, let's face it, the history of mental health um, looks a certain way. Um, the founding f- fathers mm-hmm. of mental health is mm-hmm. a certain way. Um, and so, and I think that that's been a part of it too, mm-hmm. that we just have more um, therapists out there from all walks of life and we keep pushing that further so that everybody can come in and get the care that they need and the competent care that they need and the appropriate care that they need yeah. because their stories um, are heard from their perspective. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love that. How about for you, Maggie? I think my answer is a, a, a bit layered, right? I, I definitely agree that the people that are the different, bigger platform, people who are on bigger platforms are coming out and speaking their truths, right? We have football players that are saying, putting out statements that they're having to um, take their personal time so they can focus on their well-being and their mental health. That's unprecedented. That's, no, you know, you have these right. big husky football players that are rough and tough that are saying, you know, mm. I'm having a difficult time with my mental health and I need to prioritize that, right? You mentioned Simone. I also think, as Angela was sharing earlier about, um, you know, the face of therapy changing, um, being from the black and brown community, um, what I've seen is in my clientele is um, African-American women and African-American men feeling more comfortable to reaching out. They're seeing Simone Biles who have identified and kind of embraced her mental health, right? And, and is currently living her truths, made, made it more comfortable for them to say, hey, you know, this sounds like me. I, I too am struggling with this and it's okay to get help. Mm-hmm. So I think, th- you know, those two things definitely play a huge role in the shift in um, the acceptance and the normalizing um, of, um, reaching out for, for support and services. Yeah, I agree. I agree that when, I mean, when we see someone like ourselves, mm-hmm. it, there's a connection made mm-hmm. and, we're, and it, it kind of gives us permission to say, hey, it's okay Absolutely. for me to seek mental health services. Mm-hmm. And, and especially in, um, you know, the brown and black community, BIPOC, mm-hmm. um, you know, folks, it, it just, there's been a suspicion mm-hmm. and it's like, mm, no, that's mm-hmm. not for me. I'm going to let Jesus take, take care, care of that. Of <laughs> Jesus can be a part of your therapy, you know, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's not, mm-hmm. we're not, we're not trying to take mm-hmm. that yeah. from folks. It's Actually, so that's a, it's it, I always find that when my clients have a really strong faith, Mm-hmm. that I'm able to incorporate that into yes. the therapy mm-hmm. and it becomes much more meaningful. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. yeah. So when we see people like ourselves and I just, I think that that's so, so important. Mm-hmm. It has been, it's been my pleasure mm-hmm. to have these ladies. I'm so honored that they are going to be working with the CWC team. Um, They are independent contractors, uh, meaning that they have their own businesses too, but they've been willing to, you know, uh, come aboard and spend a little time. The water's really warm (laughs) here at CWC. Mm We, um, we, we believe that, you know, we're here doing soul's work Mm -hmm. and it's really important what we do. We, but we also believe in like having fellowship mm-hmm. and having a strong connection. So that's why I do believe it's a team. Um, these ladies are going to, anyone that you want to see, um, it's going to be amazing. These, these ladies are going to be working with our Google folks who are so awesome. <laughs> we love Google. I can't say enough about Google. We love working with you and I'm so proud to have these ladies going to be working with the Google founders. And so with that said, you guys, it's been my pleasure and we will have another table talk, but probably not for a long time. These poor (laughs) ladies have been here all day long. Mm -hmm. So with that said, please follow us on Instagram, subscribe to us on YouTube. Also, you know, click like if you're following us on Facebook or TikTok. We will see you soon and happy holidays.